it is. I like it. I like it. I don't need a picture. That is several thousand dollars worth of dance lessons right there. I have a confession. I've actually been using Leon Lee's latest small form factor case, the A4 H2O Dam, for a while now. It might have stalled this video just a little. Part of the reason for my delay in bringing it back to the office and tearing down my build for you? Well, it was so easy to build in, I didn't end up with the kind of notes and building tips I usually have to share with you all. And honestly, I was so happy with the results, I didn't want to stop using the PC. Let me show you why. Let's start with specs. The Leon Lee A4 H2O Dan case comes in two colors. You've got the silver as you see here, and then you have an all black variant as well. Uh, these cases, or this case I should say, are made out of aluminum panels on the outside, and then you've got a steel chassis on the inside. For dimensions, you're looking at 326 millimeters in length, 140 millimeters in width, and 240 millimeters in height. In Freedom Units, America, that is 2.8, not 2.8, 12.8. I was so patriotic, I forgot what I was gonna say. It's 12.8 inches in depth by 5.5 inches in width by 9.6 inches in height. Motherboard size is supported is just the one size mini ITX, as I'm sure you all knew already. And then uh, for fan and radiator support, at the top here you can do either two 120 millimeter fans or up to a 240 millimeter radiator. Um, and that radiator has to be no thicker than 55 millimeters, otherwise it's not going to fit. Now, this case is actually a sandwich layout, which means that you've got essentially two different chambers in the case. One side is for the GPU, I mean, ostensibly your GPU, but really any add-in card. And then the other side is your motherboard and power supply. For the GPU side here, um, you can fit uh, graphics cards up to 320 millimeters in length. I will say as kind of a sneak peek, a spoiler if you will, for what we'll talk about later in the video, uh, you can do long graphics cards like that, but if you do, definitely pay attention to how thick they are, because otherwise fit may become a little bit of a, a messy thing. Um, for CPU clearances, or sorry, CPU cooler clearances, uh, you get up to 55 millimeters in height here. So actually not a lot of space if you're thinking about air cooling. And then for power supply sizes, you can do SFX or SFXL. And I don't know if I spun past it too fast, but on this add-in side, or sorry, add-in card side, you can do up to three PCIe slot cards. So, I mean, it does take fairly wide cards, but not like the ultimate chunkiest, if you don't mind me spoiling part of the video later on. Shh. So, for drives, you can do up to one 2.5 inch SSD, and you actually really don't get any dust filters in this case. You do have, obviously, the mesh panels here, but the size of the holes here uh, does allow in some dust. So. Uh, there's no additional like mesh filter, like a finer nylon mesh or anything like that behind it to further filter. So better for temps, maybe not so great if you live in a very dusty, pet heavy home. Time for our look at the exterior of the case. This one's gonna be pretty quick because there's actually not a lot to cover. First up is the front IO ports. You get a single USB type A port. Uh, sorry, USB 3.0 type A port, separate uh, jacks for audio and microphone, a single USB 3.1 type C port, and then finally just a lone power button here. As you can see on the case, it is covered in removable panels. So side panels, top panel, and front panel all come off really easily. I'll show you that in a second. And there's also a bottom panel that is removable as well. So on the bottom here, you have a removable panel. And this is one of the standout features of this case for me. I will most definitely sing its praises later, but in a nutshell, this makes life so much easier because sometimes you'll put components in 
and not realize, oh, I didn't quite seat that cable properly or I need to troubleshoot and I need to, you know, switch around the cables I've gotten there or I need to change the routing on this cable. Instead of having to pull everything back out, this panel allows you just to pop that off and now you have access to power supply cables, even the GPU riser cable here, and it makes life a lot simpler. While we're looking at this, I'll also point out that you don't mount it on this side. Obviously, you mount it on the inside. But this right here is your mounting spot for a 2.5 inch uh, drive. So that could be SSD hard disk drive. This is the only spot in the entire case that you have for a, you know, a drive that isn't, you know, an M.2 drive that would go on your motherboard. Very quick look at the back here. So this is your three slots for your GPU on this side. And then here is, you know, this side for your motherboard IO. And now we're going to start pulling off some panels. So uh, let's start with just the top and we'll begin prying everything off. So this is all toolless. I love it because it's so fast and easy. You just have this, you know, pin system here. Um, I think they're called, I think Leon Lee calls them snap pins. And you just press them on and just pull them out as needed for getting access to various parts of the system. What I love is that every single panel is removable so fast and easy that having to change something or redo something does not feel like a major pain in the tuchus as it has in the past or even still to some degree on other cases because of the restrictions on what you can and can't pull off the case. So here is the view of the case with all those panels removed. We'll talk more about the internal uh, stuff in just a second, but before then, just to give you a quick close up of one of these panels so you can kind of see, or sorry, you can get a better look at the mounting system and the really kind of sturdy aluminum that they used for this. Well, at least for the front panel and the top panel, I will say there's, there's one of my panels here that does have a little bit of flex to it. And then you can see that just kind of going there. The mesh on this also uh, has no additional dust filters. So it's these larger holes here. It will keep out like larger debris, but I did notice even after some use uh, of a build in this case that a little bit of dust had built up already. So my thermals aren't terrible. So I actually may experiment with buying some finer mesh and putting it on here just to keep out my cat's fur because he's got a lot of it and he likes to release it. So now we're going to move on to the interior of the case. Normally at this point of the video, I would just tear everything down so you could see how it all, you know, comes together or rather how it all comes apart. So that way it's easier for you to figure out, you know, if you want to mod the case or, you know, put something else in, you know, how much clearance you have, all of that. For this case, I'm going to do a, something a little bit differently. I actually have part of a build in here with uh, some of it pulled out so that way you get a better sense of orientation and how much space everything actually takes. Um, but first, we're going to start by looking at the manual. And the reason for this is because this manual is one of the better ones that I've seen with the case. Now, if you're new to PC building, this will seem actually pretty common that you have like really clear graphics, really clear instructions of like what screw types you have and what to expect you know, the order in which you're doing things, how many screws that particular step takes. Like this reminds me a lot of looking at Lego manuals, which are really quite good, but this is unusual for PC building. Uh, at least if you go further back in time, I'm sure the old timers will also remember when you would get, get like a, just a single sheet of paper with maybe one or two diagrams and you were left to figure it out on your own. Um, sometimes they are even in, you know, just in Chinese. And so if you didn't read or write Chinese, you're kind of SOL. I almost forgot one thing. Normally in these case teardown videos, I do show you the accessories box or the accessories bag as it, you know, as you might call it. Uh, for this particular video, you're not really seeing the full amount of screws you get, but I, I have this page open so you can see the full overview of what you're supposed to get in the box. And what I will say to you all, is that you get exactly the number of screws that you need. That means don't lose anything. Because the manual does go over the assembly process and offers pretty clear instructions on how that works, this interior look that I'm going to do will focus more on uh, just 
things I want to call out for you so that you can keep that in mind while you're building in case you need to strategize or, you know, plan a, with a little bit more attention to detail, the kind of parts and the size of the parts that you're going to put into the case. So we'll start with the GPU side. This case is a sandwich layout. So that means that you've got two essential chambers in the case. So you've got this half right here, which is for the GPU and the other half is for your motherboard and your power supply. From the look of it here, when you have nothing populating this chamber, or sorry, this section, you've got all this space for a graphics card. However, when you build out, and you will see this later, because I will show you the more of a complete build, so you'll have actual visual references for you know, some more of the sticky points of building. Um, you have this power extension cable here that will you know, have to route from the back to where you, know, you can actually put a wall cord there to where the power supply is. You have this in the way. Um, you have to, you know, maneuver the graphics card into the riser cables PCIe slot. So the riser cable mounts up here, you know, goes down here underneath and then connects to the actual PCIe slot on your ITX motherboard. And then you have all the space here in theory to work with for a graphics card. Now you will have the power supply here. So that's going to take up some room already. And not just because the power supply is there, but more because the power supply is going to push certain elements, certain cables, or in this case here also, the tubes from my AIO cooler. It's going to push it a little bit more this way. So you're going to have that. You're going to have power supply cables to deal with. So those are things to keep in mind when you are choosing your parts for a build. Uh, the other point that I want to mention is that uh, definitely make use of this front cutout in the front panel here for maneuvering your graphics card it is super useful and also make use of this bottom panel here because that does help with um, the cables uh, power cables rather and also uh, making sure that you know you get everything in without the riser cable you know causing some difficulty with maneuvering also one more note before we switch to the other side so this is a case that accommodates triple slot cards triple slot graphics cards rather However, I will note that I tried a chunkier card and also one that was, you know, about the full maximum accommodate length of what, 322 millimeters. It, uh, well, let's just say you should tune into the completed build part of, the sec of this uh, video for the full details because it definitely required some maneuvering and it wasn't entirely a success, we'll just say that. Now we're on the other side of the case where the motherboard, as you can see right here, and the power supply go. So on the, towards the back half of the case, you've got a fully populated motherboard right now. Obviously I've got all the crazy wires hanging off of it as well. So you're gonna have, I'm just actually gonna do this on purpose to give you an idea of how much extra clutter you're gonna get from some of these, ca like some of these cables. So this is an RGB. Um, water block to boot so I've got extra cables to deal with that so if you don't care about RGB you actually might want to choose a non-RGB version so you just have less even fewer cables to worry about otherwise it's gonna it gets gets a little little hairy in here with like all of this right and having to deal with the the cable routing I very obviously did not care about cable routing here, partially to give you a sense of how chaotic it can get and you know how much you may have to think about your routing. So here are your uh, tubes for the AO cooler. And this is another thing to think about how you're gonna route this. So the way I did it for this particular build, and I'm sure there's gonna be somebody out there screaming about how they would have done differently. However, this is how I chose to do it. So I've draped it here. And so this is the power supply bracket. I really like that this comes off. It makes it a lot easier to deal with everything in this system. So you take your small form factor power supply, you mount it to this bracket here. I obviously recommend hooking up your cables before you do all of this. And then you are going to, let's see, how do I curl this in here? Um, do I want to curl this way? I'm going to curl this way. Okay, so, so then this fits in this spot here. Before I drop this in, I want to show you 
that right now I have a smaller, like a small form factor graphics card in here. So it doesn't go nearly as far towards the front of the case as say like a standard founder's edition card would, something that's closer to like 11 or 12 inches in length. So you have more space here for your extra cables or like your extra length on cables. If you choose a graphics card that is larger, obviously you're gonna have less space and you'll get a better view of this when we look at a complete build in this case, which th that section will come later in the video. But for now, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So it's something to think about when you're planning out your parts list. So if I remember right, how did I do this? I kinda have to maneuver this this way to get this down in here and I might have yeah so I'm like I'm pushing the my tubes off here I'm trying not to put too much pressure on them so then you would just mount the uh, power supply down like this with the screws and you're set to go obviously I don't have this perfectly sat just yet but something like that so this is what it looks like when you've got everything put together now in the manual, they say, you know, flip on. Oh, right, right. So I forgot to do one thing, something very important, which is there's that extension cable from the back for the power supply. So what you'd want to do before mounting this in is obviously you want to put that extension cable in there. And they tell you in the, um, in the manual to flip. So this is on already. So it's, you know, deep by default, you're set to off. You want to flip that on before you mount. But I will tell you, if you've got smaller hands or you have like a, uh, like a stick, like a, a wooden dowel or a chopstick or something, you can still reach in there once it's mounted and flip this on and off. So it's not like a done deal once you do it. So don't worry too much about that. One more thing, actually. So the manual doesn't actually tell you this. So if you're new to small form vector building, definitely think about what cables you want to plug in before you start mounting like brackets and tying, like uh, tightening things down. So in this case with the power supply bracket, before I install this, what I would want to do is plug in, obviously my plug in my 24 power pin, sorry, this way, 24 power pin cable, any SATA cables here, you know, your front panel pin connectors, the USB, um, I think 3.0, yeah, 3.0 connector for the the front panel as well, you know, front audio, everything like that, because once this is in, you're gonna have very little maneuvering room to work with. You can take out the RAM, but then also you have to deal with the, because the cables are gonna be like this, or sorry, the tubes are gonna be like this, right? So then you're gonna have less maneuverability for even taking the RAM like in and out. So again, um, when you're doing small form factor, just take a little extra time to think about the order of how you're doing things so that it'll save you more time down the road. The final thing I want to show you related to the interior of the case is actually related to this top mount bracket here. And you know, this is for either a radiator or fans. Obviously I have a radiator mounted to this bracket because of the all-in-one cooler I have attached to the CPU. But regardless of what you're attaching to it, my advice to you here is going to be the same. And that is, <laughs> I would like to save you from making the same dumb mistake that I did. And what I mean by that is when you mount the bracket, it is actually possible to uh, attach it upside down. <laughs> what, so when it's properly oriented, you will see this mounting part kind of go up and out as opposed to down and out. I mounted it with this kind of orientation, right? So like pretend it's oriented like this, but just like on top. When you do that, you can still drop it onto this space perfectly fine. You can still screw it in perfectly fine. You'll realize you made the same mistake I did when you go to put on the top panel, you go like this and you try to press down and you can't get the snap pins to go in to the receptors, right? So you're just stuck like this. You've got an inadvertent top hat kind of look to your system because you didn't actually think about what you were doing and didn't heed my warning. I am the Titanic, don't follow my path. All right, so this part of the video is where I normally show you what it looks like to put 
you know, a few different components into the case. This time it's going to be a little different. We actually have a full build in here and I want to show you what it looks like with a couple of different graphics cards inside. So first we've got here uh, a version with a shorter um, graphics card, obviously designed for small form factor builds. This actually is very, very simple when you use something of this length because you have a lot more space for cables. Right here is the front, here is the rear of the case. And so uh, I didn't actually do much cable management as you can see, but even if I had, I don't think, especially with these cables, I would have gotten much more play. In fact, one of my biggest recommendations for everybody using this case is to go with the more premium upgrade and get uh, braided cables. They're a bit softer, they're a little more malleable. Um, these flat cables are great for not taking a lot of space, but as you can see, they're a little bit stiff and it's I found them a little difficult to get around corners. I'm gonna flip for just a second to the other side. And as you can see here, that creates a little bit of a problem with the 24 pin power cable. So this is actually sticking out a little bit past where the panel would go. When I have the panel on, it stays, but you can see just a tiny bump like right here, it kind of goes out a little bit. And long term, it's not something I would want for my computer because it will warp that panel over time. I mean, I could probably try and press this down a little bit more, but I don't even have very tall RAM. So if I had taller RAM, that would already interfere. So there's gonna be like, some manipulation I got to do here with this particular cable that it really isn't allowing just because of the stiffness of that. So let's go back again. So this is an RTX, uh, let's see the Asus dual RTX 3060 is, is in here right now. And next I'm going to show you what it looks like to have a more full size or full length card. I'm going to put in our, GTX, oh dear departed, GTX 1080 for you. And now we have the GTX 1080 inside. This card is about 266 millimeters in length. Again, just as a reminder, the full clearance that you're allowed in this case is up to 322 millimeters. So I promised, I teased earlier in the video, um, my adventures with larger cards, or sorry, I should say larger graphics cards, the ones that, you know, really fill up that maximum length of 322 millimeters um, that the case can support. Now, I believe I mentioned, I may have said something about thickness being a problem uh, in this case, and that's, to a degree, that's true, but that's actually not the word I, I meant to use. And so uh, what I meant to say was that the width of the card actually is more influential on whether or not you're gonna get something like a 6800 XT or a, an RTX 3080 or even 3090 into this case. Uh, what I mean by that is, as you can see here, I've got an EVGA RTX 3080 into uh, the A4 H2O. I um, just you know brought it through the front door here, that opening in the front panel. Uh, did some wiggling around, got it through fine, you know, sat it down into the PCIe slot. Not that difficult. There's a little bit of extra wiggling you might have to do because of the thickness of the card, but otherwise it, you know, fits in okay, not too many problems. Uh, oh, however, if you have a sharp eye, you will notice though that I did change the, uh, the routing for my AIO tubes here. So the cooler, the cooler I have with the tube length that I have, I prefer doing it the other way for the routing towards the bottom uh, because that way it didn't kink the tubes quite so hard. But for a graphics card of this size, unfortunately for it to fit, I did have to change how I routed those tubes. And you can kind of see it here that it's a little, just a little bit like, which I don't prefer. But to make this work, that's what you have to do. Something to keep in mind. Um, Everybody is going to have a little bit of a different experience with that because, you know, um, how you mount the water block, the exact length of the tubes varies a little bit from uh, all-in-one cooler to all-in-one cooler. Uh, this particular uh, Corsair model that I have happened to work out this way. So did that, got this in the front door, everything fits. Although, you know, as you can also see at the bottom of the case here, I will have uh, some little finessing to do, shall we say, with these uh, the stiff braided cables that I was mentioning. Again, uh, like I said earlier, 
softer braided cables are likely the best way to go with this case, in my opinion. Um, but to, to get to the main part of the story, I am digressing here a little bit, is that it's this width here, the height of the car, that's a problem because originally I tried the 6800 XT. And this particular uh, Asus Tough Gaming model has this, uh, shall we call it, protrusion on the fan shroud here. Looks very cool. You know, it makes it look real tough. But <laughs> because of that extra width, uh, I could not, for love or money, get this card into this case. And you can see from the battle scars right here that I tried. Oh, my friends, let me tell you, I tried so hard to get this card into this case. Like, I tried wiggling through the front door, or sorry, the front panel opening. I tried, uh, you know, maneuvering it in like this way and like trying to like squish it back this way. Uh, I even took out the riser cable, unmounted that, uh, plugged it in. Uh, plug this into the riser cables PCIe slot first so I could with the hope that maybe I could kind of wiggle it in get it down and then like remount the riser cable because my biggest problem was like trying to get enough maneuvering room in here so I could actually sit this card into that slot uh, nothing worked I eventually had to admit defeat it was a sad bitter moment for me so when you are picking a card, and if you are going to be looking at cards of this kind of heft, uh, definitely pay attention to these kind of details about how much uh, room it takes height-wise. Because you are going to be looking at a thick card regardless, so that already, that already reduces your maneuverability. So don't make it even harder for yourself or impossible because you've also taken off what remaining space you have to wiggle things around. So the best summary for this case is actually something that my past self left in a note to my current self. And I'm just gonna quote it directly. What I said was, this is the easiest case I have ever built in, like pure happiness. And I know some of you out there are going to say, but, but what about larger cases? Aren't those simpler? I stand by my words. Now, it's true that there are other cases, especially larger cases that are easy to build in, and there are other you know, small form factor cases about this size that have a similar layout and are pretty straightforward as well. However, I really think that Leon Lee's design choices in here that make you know a few things just a little bit easier, plus that really well illustrated and you know thoughtfully laid out manual that helps people who are not familiar with small form factor builds, you know, get acquainted with the process and just zip right through. I think that elevates this case above all the other options for me, especially right now, uh, given how hot small form factor is and how much I personally am digging, you know, this particular part of the PC building scene. On top of that, when you factor in the price, this case is particularly compelling. So the PCIe 3.0 riser cable version is $130 US, and the PCIe 4.0 riser cable version is $165 US. That's definitely cheaper than some of the popular high-end cases out there in this size, but it's also still really good value compared to some of the other cases, also same size, that seem to be cheaper when you look at their listings. The thing is though, a lot of those cases don't include a riser cable, so you still are gonna have to not only buy one, but source it yourself as well. So this particular case is really nice in that it saves you the hassle of having to get separate shipments in. You can just pull out the box and start building and you're just ready to go. If the A4H2 appeals to you, you can get it at a couple of different vendors. There's Newegg for us here in the US, and then if you're in Europe, there's Case King in Germany and Overclockers UK. So that does it for this case tour. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe to our channel for more on PCs and PC building. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one.